Howdy, partners. I want to start off this episode with a shout out to my friend, training with Tubby, the artist formerly known as the drummer for restaurant. You all know restaurant, right? Well, you're fixing to if you don't. But anyway, I got to get rid of this because I got to be able to count now. I've got a miracle happening here. And if you have all ever paid attention in your life just once, up there there's something missing. Up there above the fret, Wallachy violin. Do you see it? Of course you don't. Because please don't bother trying to find it. It's not there because it's right over here. Now what is it? Well, it's a... Restaurant. It's got a V in it. You see that? Restaurant guitar case. One. Let's check. Write it down. One rest av rot restaurant guitar case. Just one. What's so special about that? Well, guess what? Looky here. Oh, it is two. This will be on the test. Two restaurant guitar cases. You saw them. See them? Oh, there's stuff falling down. Restaurant guitar case number two. Look at that fabulous marketing and labeling. Yes. Now, why are there two? Well, you've seen on my channel you loyal viewers all four of you have seen an episode called too good to junk pile k a value leader 6535 it's up there right now you need to watch it but not now don't fall behind it's not the rest of our fault that you are not a loyal viewer so hover your mouse up there later but do you all know the number 12 junk pile? Well, I had to stop there for a minute because there might have been some technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. Listen. You see, the F holes are taped up. Why? Because this thing feeds back. Did you see this? Diamond plate. Eli Green, hoodoo voodoo bead. Neck has been broken off of this thing. Tuners are different. Oh, look at that neck. Look at that neck reset. You don't need the three-way switch, just tape it off. You want them all on at the same time. Thing's a monster. It feeds back terribly. That's not open D. I don't even know what that is. That is terrible. Anyway, this is the number 12 junk pile. You may recall, as in an episode, I'll read your mouse up there. I wanted this guitar i coveted this guitar i saw this guitar in a video this is a different video i will share my coveting start date which is about eight years ago and i saw this guitar in a video up there that you are going to see up there right now and anyway, i followed it forever i said i want that guitar not one like it but that one this one not that one this one and so the opportunity came. I had possession of the guitar. If I had possession over Judgment Day, well, I did for about three days. I actually had this guitar, and I traded off another one. And then that guitar got destroyed. Excuse me, destroyed. But you, you know what I mean. You see all this here. These modifications. I like this Mason string uh, guitar strap. Anyway, 
So I lost it for a bit and then I found another one just like it except it hadn't been detroyed. And so I went to Troy and I said, look, I'm leaving with one of these guitars. You can make the pick. And um, that's why, remember me telling you I found another one, 60s model K65, 35 value liter, ooh. One of these guitars is, this is like the double mint twins of guitars right here. Now, come out of my shop, it did not have a drywall screw with some kind of, I don't know what that is, in the neck. It did not have red dots on it that were used to paint the case. It did not have police caution tape on it, but it's Troy's now. It did not have a bent tuner. Anyway, he needs all those things. So why am I showing you this? Just in case you really haven't had to covet a lot of stuff lately. That is not every uh, Fred McDowell tune that was ever made. Okay, so why am I doing this? Well, this episode is called Don't let the number 12 fall over again. Let's see if we can get that thing feedbacking. But I swear, if there is something that brings guitars to me and it's either a blessing or a curse, it is the reason that this episode is called Jacked Up. And what that means is where the input jack is on just about every guitar. I'm going to show you a couple throughout the episode. Right here. I swear nobody ever checks to see if that nut right there is tight. And when it loosens up and you're plugging in and out and twisting things around, things get loose. And then they start to spin. And then your wire that's connected to the jack there's two wires one of them pops off and then you get no sound and it's an arch top not everybody wants to dig around in an arch top it's hard you need I'm not going to tell you how to do it because then you all try to put me out of business and I'm already out of business and that would make things even more difficult for me anyway something else that happens frequently is the knot will come off and you end up with the other part of your input jack inside. So, this guitar is fixing to go to Europe. Number 12, stand with me. But, we are going to put an end pin jack here. So, can Troy can use his best Sunday belt because that's what he usually uses for a guitar strap. But, we are going to pull this off. We're going to patch up that hole. I've got the perfect thing. Troy seems to be liking this pretty much. I think it was made at the brewery. You can see off the five, the old Edison building that says brewery on the smokestack. Anyway, we're going to cover up the old hole with this. And we are going to put an end pin jack in here and get rid of this problem so this thing is durable and lasts as long as number 12 until I'm about 80 years old and then I find something else and I get this one too because Troy you know that I will have every guitar that you own so let's get to the bench man it's hot turn that off okay I will no problem sorry okay people I got some theoretics to go through uh, and um and we'll get to that. But first, I need to show you the before. Before. Do you see it? Right there. And that was, well, it was kind of the before. This is an old pass can. I told you that a little bit earlier if you were paying attention. Always pay attention. It'll be on the test. This is the top. They called it a flat top because you needed an opener. And this is the bottom. And this is the tool that we carefully took 
this can apart and cut it with shears, a technique I will not show you, so we could end up with this. And I want you to notice that this is curved like a radius, and uh, that radius will become important. But just remember this, can you? Will you? Hey, Eli Green. Look at those front markers. Those are awesome. Anyway, that is incredible. Look at that. That is a drywall screw. I think this is something that holds a license plate on or something. I'm not sure. Do not criticize anything here on this guitar. Those, those are original K uh, soap bar uh, clean ice box, whatever you want to call them. It's got all the original stuff. Look at that. That so it's await you if you mess with this. But anyway, here we go. Let's lay this right here. I love this workbench. But now, is there a problem? The way he flings these guitars around, I think this could be a problem. So we're gonna kill a couple birds. Oh, just a minute. It's Chick Flick Teal Bird. His partner's over there. Anyway, let's plug this thing in. Big hand for Chick Free Teal Pointer. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do here is we are going to pull this off of here and we are going to put an end pin jack in here. Now, while we're here, you want to remember every time. Yeah, I'm still messing around. I'm getting old. Don't cuss me. Anyway, every time you do this, you're always twisting it. This nut is going to come loose. Now, if you have to have these, a little bit of um, Loctite right there may help you, but this is a problem. Maybe we should look at a guitar with a problem like this. Because, guys, I see this all the time. Either this is loose and it's spun around or somebody is spinning on it while they're trying to put it together with a something or other. But let's see if I can't find the tool that I'm going to talk about because there is actually two of them. Okay, this one is called the bullet. You see this? It has a spot for a nut that mysteriously matches that. It has a rubber thing that goes inside where the cable goes like this. So you simply put this here, you hold this like this, you put that on there, hold this, and then you turn this and it keeps it very tight. See that? You want one of these. You want this in your guitar case. They're expensive, but not as expensive as having to go to a luthier and get this taken, pulled back in. I'm gonna have to show you how to do that. It involves coat hangers and all magnets and all other kinds of things. Another thing I want you to remember is that on these guitars, the strings have to be grounded. All this has to be grounded and there is a wire that will come through this area here and sit out in against the body underneath here and then when you put the screws back in that wire touching this will ground it. Anytime you pull the tailpiece off of an arch top 
you really need to make sure that you know where that wire is. Be aware that it's there or you'll never figure it out. Then you'll take it to a luthier and they will charge $150 to find that wire. Okay, again, this is called the bullet. This is brass, the rest is plastic. This is called the knot bullet. It has this handle, some kind of scrap apparatus here. It has this. This goes here. It fits into a socket like this. See that? It fits right there. And I can put this here. And it's got the other end of the socket mysteriously fits. This goes inside. Then this here will mysteriously drop right down on there. And then you simply hold this and you turn this like so and it will stop this will stop the nut or the jack from turning once it's in there because it grabs those knurled piece right there and you pop this in here like so and then this drops down the socket is built for that nut and you and the same thing you can take them off that way too this is a must for your lutherism this is toolbox right here okay you need to pay attention they're here chick flick teal birds they're done with tippy hedring you could be next so pay attention this is called a spanner you see it there are teeth on this side right here teeth here no teeth here, flip it over. It's the opposite, teeth here, no teeth here. So, remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy. I wanna take this off. So, I can take this, if you don't have one of those other things, and I can grab it like that, and see it came off really easy. Now, I am going to just, do this and I am going to take that off and I'm going to replace it with what well watch it's going to pop in there I'm going to have a problem uh oh bye bye why would you do that well because I'm going to put one of these right here see that your strap will go right there. Your cable will go right there. You see this? See cable pin? Okay, I need to fish whatever was in there out of there because I need the wires off of it to go here. You ever see one of these? Yeah, it's called the common coat hanger. Okay, I fished that in there. And I got a hold of this. And I want to make sure that I don't drop this now. Like so. Because then it will take me another three seconds to fish it out of there. Okay, with me? Good. That was some heavy wire they used back in the 60s. They made things bigger and better than including me okay see that there are two wires there I'm gonna get the soldering iron out I'm gonna heat this up and we're gonna use these two wires okay these original manufacturers strap button pins they're made out of wood they're tapered they're a nightmare and they are oh so fragile when you are dependent on your stuff to stick together so we don't want this i'm going to put this back in the case don't keep other people's parts and we just there you go but guys 
there is nothing holding this in other than a taper. You see that? Now, this goes all the way through the tail block, and so I am going to fish something there and go and end up over here because I'm going to want to pull that through. As you can see, the wire is just a tad short. So we're going to, again, get the soldering iron out. We're going to lengthen that wire out with, with some pushback wire. Don't give me a lot of pushback here. And then we are going to take one like this, as you can see, has the hot wire on it already. We're going to drill this out a little bit and we're going to put that right there. Beautiful. Now guys, before I go at this with this big old giant bit, we want to remember, if that wire that's grounding everything is drooping right here, you're going to wind it around the bit, and then you're going to find out that everything buzzes later, and if that happens, it will be because you have wound the ground wire that's going to here because it's drooping from over there down into here around the bit. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but if it does, well, I'll just fix it. So when you're working on something like this, you want to go backwards first because, because it gives it the countersink effect. If you go in like this and something hangs, you're going to go through a block of wood about this big here and it will snag up and you'll have a problem. See that? Countersink. The clutch is set very low. You'll notice that. Now it's time to go in. That tail block is about that long. Now, I'm going to set this back up here and we're going to go backwards a little bit and knock those burrs off there. And we're going to take this and we might be a little bit short yet. You see that? We sure are. So instead of going like this, we are going to take a reamer and we're going to put it in there. Now I want to tell you about reamers. When you are using a reamer, once you get the hole a little bit bigger, you want to turn it backwards. This is an old violin maker's trick because it compresses the wood. If, it, if the wood's not compressed, it will continue to wear. Look at that. Okay, now we're going to take a very small bit and we are going to hold this like this. We're going to put a hold up that big there. There. And there. And we will have chick flick teal screws to put in those holes. And we have a plethora of chick flick teal screws. Okay, guys, this is pushback wire. I'm using yellow and black on purpose because when I look down into the body, with a mirror and a flashlight or an iPhone or whatever won't fit in the F holes. That's it. Oh, by the way, you can tell what's going on that this is a 65-35 when you take the pit guard off. They didn't finish the F holes like they did on this side. And this side, there's a flat spot right up here that curves around. Believe me on that. So, where were we? We're going to wind up this wire like this. See that? And then I'm going to make sure I've got shrink wrap here in a minute. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a little bend in it like that, like so. 
and I am going to feed it in here and I'm going to want it to come up over in that F hole like so and when it gets over there I'm going to take my coat hanger and pull it up and make the connection up here eliminate this and use some shrink wrap to tie these together and then I'll be able to push some slack through here and put my end pin jack right there watch me mommy watch me watch me You caught it live, brother. Now, make sure that you take something like this little end pin and put that right there so it doesn't pull back through. You don't want that. Now, it's fixing to be soldering time. Okay, guys, pay attention. I have, we don't want to spill these. I have shrink wrap of every color here cut to size already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the longer ones that's yellow, I'm gonna set it aside, and then I'm gonna take a yellow one, a small one, and a green one. Why green? Well, because green is ground, and we will remember that when we put this in. We're gonna set this aside. Always close that thing. Then I have my soldering iron down here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we have already taped down both of these wires. So when we're working on them, they don't go back inside the body. So now we're just gonna take, have a piece of sponge. You can hear that. Always clean your tip of your soldering iron with a sponge. And then this is the wrap around that went in the original harness. So we're just gonna loosen that up like so. There we go. If somebody wants this, well, go see Troy. Okay, this is where we really wanna pay attention. We have this long piece of shrink wrap that we're going to put on the original wire like so and we're going to slide that down a ways we're going to keep it away from where the soldering is going on because we don't want to melt that it's got to go over two wires now this is called pullback wire because and these wraps that i put in here are going to be handy now but this pullback wire allows you just to grab a hold of this like so and pull the wire back you see that now we just want to make sure that everything is clean like so and then we just push that back if you need to pull it back a little bit more Grab the tips with your wire cutter and do that. Now, the good thing is, is after you make your connection, you can push that back up as you need to. But what we are going to do is since the black wire is the ground and we know that, we're going to put this green shrink wrap. We're going to take it all the way back to there and we're going to take the yellow and we're going to put it all the way back to there now what we're going to do is we're going to take the hot wire which is this one and we're going to wrap it there like so good and then we are going to take our solder you hear me 
using the wet sponge and we're just going to put that there there we go put that back in there now we're going to take our hot wire which is right there like so we're going to get it way down to where it needs to be and get these two out of the way of each other right to the sponge again you can hear that and heat that up a tad and there we go we're going to let that set for a second we're going to clip off them end pieces out here like so we're going to pull this one back at each other you see that like so right like that let's get a tad bit more of that off I don't want that touching that ground like so and then we're going to pull up the shrink wrap here like so see that now we're going to take our pea soup Andersons Buellton California Cultural Capital World we're going to pop one of those there we're going to put that right there and that's all going to shrink up look at that now we're going to take this one and we're going to fold it back against itself look at that and we are going to feed that ground and put it underneath Oh, there's a little piece there that's still struggling to do what it's told to do. It doesn't realize in a couple of weeks it's going to be in Germany in a packed stadium and people are going to freak out. And this work that we're doing right now will become very important. There we go. I don't see any wire or solder. One more time. P. Soup Anderson. I got a story about one of the sons of the people that founded that in a plane crash above Los Pinitos Peak. And now you're saying, hey, what are you going to do with all this? What are you going to do with your life? Well, I am going to take this big shrink wrap now and I am going to feed it over the top of this mass and we're going to make this one harness and if anybody ever has to work on it again we can pull all this up right here and everything will be fine okay so now we're going to pull our pin out and we are going to pull this through now that wire splice is right there so we are going to leave a little bit of this here so we can pull this back out later to fix it if we need to I'm going to cut that about right there I'm going to pull this up where we can get to it okay and we're going to put that pin back in there okay now it's the same thing we are going to get a green bit now these can be a little bit smaller because they got to go over the lugs for the jack one each of those and then we'll pull up A piece of let's let's do the bigger black piece like this to make sure everything is stable again close these 
So, we're going to do ourselves a favor. We're going to pull that back. I got to get my glasses on. I don't know what's going on without my glasses. Now that I'm 28 years old, I suddenly need glasses for some reason. Anyway, so again, here is going to be green for ground. And we're going to push that down in here. That's wrapped up so it can't go back in the body. Yellow is going to be here. That's going to be the hot wire. Okay, we are going to do ourselves a favor. We are going to bend these over just a little bit. And we're going to hook the hot one. Goes here. Like so. And then we're going to push the ground right there and bend that up. Like so. And then we are going to plug in the amp. And we're going to make sure. There we go. Those, by the way, are the original metal top hat knob so everything's working here so we can go ahead this is a three-way switch everything is working here so we are going to go ahead and solder these up and then we're going to deal with this little problem right now All right, we'll get those covered up. I like to do that because it keeps everything in place. This is not something you want to be messing around with later. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. These are junky guitars. If Troy Murrow likes it, you should. Okay, we will pull this out and we will... Wind that up like so. We will put that there. That, my friends, is the beauty of a chick flick teal screw. You will know that I have worked on your guitar if there is a chick flick tail screw don't strip these out don't run them in all the way all right and then the last thing you want to do is put the handle back on your handy dandy double screwdriver from your local ace hardware and you want to run that in just a little bit there we go and then never take anything for granted
saw the before well here is the after let's close this out I got a couple other things to show you real quickly real quickly all right guys there we go let's get the restaurant hat on um, Troy's K value leader 6535 outside of this bent tuner you know what you do with that you take a needle nose and you just slowly but surely put it on the bent part and the straight part and it's going to take you 20 minutes but you'll be able to put that back where it goes do not just bend it over uh, and think it's going to go it's going to snap but um, this thing is ready to go um, I try to do this configuration when I can because if you put one of these on the side over here if it hits and drops it's going to punch a hole you see me work on a few of those guitars at Fred's but this one is ready to go in the case and I'll talk about that and where it's going in a minute but I want to show you a couple more guitars real quick if you watch marketplace or whatever you're doing look at this this is a resonator with a piezo pickup it's got an equalizer on it I really don't like the way these things look there's got to be a better way to put these in but whatever anyway I cannot believe the price I got this guitar for it's in awesome shape again it has a piezo look at the back look at the woodwork there is absolutely nothing wrong that would stop this guitar for selling for several hundred dollars, except, guess what? Yeah, first thing I had to do was fish out the jack because it had twisted off. Now, guess what? There's no F holes in this. There's no sound hole in this unless you take off this big resonator and remember when you're taking off resonators you got to mark everything you got to make sure everything is okay and these screws around the resonator cover are infamous for stripping out because for some reason they got to make the hole to sound well just barely enough to put these in that wall or out we had a uh, i think we had an episode about a guy that rolled through town that I fixed a Gretsch honey dipper resonator or a box car or whatever it was I'll give you a link up there okay so instead of getting several three four hundred dollars for this this comes in at a hundred dollars and yeah I can fix it but guys pay attention now here's the real screamer this is a Glenn Burton guitar. It is spotless. Look at this thing. I've got a Brownsville that's kind of like this, but this has a Florentine cutaway like an ES-175. Look how thick. There's not a scratch on this. Pristine. You know what? Guess what I got it for? I'm ashamed to tell you. You want to know why? Yeah, right there missing so this one's a little bit different I've got to start pulling off pickups take strings off do all of that so when somebody shows up with something like this if you're looking to trade up in a shop you're looking to sell it if somebody can't take one of those uh, rolling micro cues and meet you in a parking lot plug it in and play it you're going to get virtually nothing for the guitar okay so 
Let's make sure we don't put any scratches on that one. You know what? We'll use old number 12 as a stand, but back to Troy. Troy and Tyler are going to be playing festival or two in Europe. Um, that's going to be in early to mid July. If you're over there, see them. They are something you will never forget it. So, hey, Troy, thanks a ton for giving me some work over here and i always appreciate your guitars and then seeing them play in a show guys this is what fake lutherism is all about if you have not given this episode a like by now i am going to pray for you oh there it is look we'll crash to the floor but yeah that's for you padna almost fell down and Give me a subscribe if you haven't. I will see you soon. I got some real junk you're going to want to see.